Good afternoon. We're going to get our afternoon sessions going. You may recall we're going to have two sessions going on in here. Uh, the first one will be talking about tips off. Actually do as much hands-on as we can. I know Troy has given some people had their computers here some passwords. You'll be able to access and go along. Uh, if you want to come up, I think they'll let you bang on his computer as you want as well. Uh, so tips off to go off, lead off first. And then we'll have Judge Carter and Dave Perlman uh, talk about some of the legal aspects of law enforcement and crime stoppers. And I'm, I'm sure they'll want to make it as interactive as, as, as possible. Uh, but we're going to start off with Troy. Uh, I'm not going to read Troy's bio directly from the sheet, but I will just share a few examples. I've, I've known Troy for a very long period of time now. I used to be live in Illinois and worked with the Illinois State Crime Stoppers, helped set that organization up, and, and Troy's been a part of that for many years. Uh, Troy, Troy's a deputy chief down in, in Champaign, Urbana area, in Champaign though specifically. But there's two cities, it's, it's really, you can't tell them apart. Uh, one close to Illinois, but the University of Illinois is in Urbana, and you're in Champaign, but they, they, all, they all mesh together. It's like Bloomington Normal in Illinois too. Uh, but I've known Troy for a very long time. Troy's been a very good supporter of Crime Stoppers for many years. He helps us on the Crime Stoppers USA side in some resource development uh, activities. And so Troy is very conversant in, in a lot of aspects of Crime Stoppers. But he is also very versed in, in the Tipsoft. And uh, I've seen him do this presentation several times. Most recently when we were trying to set up some programs in uh, Northern Illinois, in Arlington Heights and Mount Prospect area. Uh, and so please, uh, if Troy doesn't know the answer, he'll, he'll get back to you on it. But uh, bang away at the computers and, and take the best shot at it. So I'll introduce Troy. Thank you. Good afternoon, cheeseheads. I, I come in peace from uh, Illinois. This afternoon, we're going to be talking about Tipsoft. You can get a lot of information on Tipsoft at www.tipsoft.com. Um, from my opinion, as far as a crime stopper organization or a police agency, mm -hmm. Tipsoft is by far, without question, the best money that you can spend. The best value you'll get, the most return on your dollar comes from tips off. The ability to get anonymous information from a tipster and engage in two-way anonymous dialogue is absolutely critical. And there are people and citizens throughout the country and in Wisconsin even, that might be hard to believe, but Wisconsin that, that believe in technology, use it all the time. You look at these kids today, they'll be sitting right next to each other and they'll be texting each other because they don't make phone calls anymore. A lot of people are afraid to make phone calls because they're afraid that their voice will get recorded or they're afraid that their, their phone you know, is somehow tapped or that we'll be able to trace their phone. It, it makes uh, tipsters very nervous. So uh, the point is, and we'll see example after example as we talk this afternoon, how important Tipsoft is. Tipsoft developer is Kevin Anderson, dear friend of mine from Texas, wears the big hat. Um, Hard worker, works 12, 14 hours a day, seven days a week, drinks beer the other three hours. He gets a couple hours of sleep a night. Judge Carter. Six drinks. hours. Oh, okay. He drinks beer for six hours. Judge Carter's here also. So the point is this afternoon, we I want this to be very relaxed. If you have questions right away, please shoot your hand up. If you have comments, a story, if you think I'm wrong, please tell me. Uh, you're, what you're getting today, last year you got Lisa Haber, much smarter, college professor, much prettier. more, much more beautiful. What's that? Yeah, prettier. Um, you're not getting that. I'm cheaper. I, I live in Illinois. I'm just a few hours away. It costs you guys a hotel room. That's pretty much it. That's why you have me today, and that's not a good sign um, for our. Uh, maybe we'll see. All right. So, um, so this afternoon we're going to look at a, a number of things that deal with tips off and how your program can use technology to its, to its fullest to get information. The first thing I want to talk about is your website. Um, how many people here have a good law enforcement website, I mean a good crime stopper website for their program? Okay, good. If you don't, you can go to Anderson Software and you can get a uh, Dynasite. That's what we use in Illinois. And so I'm going to go to our website here. First thing we're going to talk about is the web tip. How a person, how a citizen communicates to law enforcement through the web. So you'll notice on this Dynasite uh, that comes from Anderson Software that there's a spot right at the very top that says give a tip. I click on that tip. It goes to a web tip form. You can go in different languages and we're going to fill out a tip right now. Suspect name. 
Scott Aiken. Nickname Snoopy or Snoop Dog. Grace White. Now we're not going to fill in all these, but you can see um, Kevin Anderson traveled all over the world to different Crime Stopper conferences. He stalked with cops all over the world. And so through the years, we've developed, he's developed, a lot of these questions that are, are repeatedly asked. So they're constantly looking for feedback from agencies. And so you'll notice just a ton, and we're not going to fill all of them, suspects clothing for Scott Abrams, um, vintage, dogs, pit bulls, gang affiliation, cheese heads, employer, unemployed. He calls himself a consultant, but he's unemployed. Vehicle information, Chevy, crime notes, type of type of offense, um, window, peepee, <coughs> crime description, peeks in windows, and sells drugs behind the corner mark. What kind of drugs he uses, he uses cocaine, how's it measured, grams, You'll notice we're just going on and on and on. We can also upload a photo if we wanted to, a digital photograph. But they'll also take um, a video according to the sheet. I, I didn't realize that, but that's what it says. And the tipster can then create their own password, upload. All right. Submit a tip. Okay, so now we're, we're now submitting the tip. W397-1004. Okay, so what's happening now is the information is encrypted. It's going to a server in Texas. The IP address of the person who sent the tip in is not, is not logged. So there is no way for anyone to find out who, I don't want to say no way. It would be extraordinarily difficult for anyone except maybe people at the upper levels of government that were already focused in on the person to be able to find out who did this. It's almost, it, it's, it's very difficult. Um, the point is, is that right now with phones, certainly much less secure than, than this system. So, so uh, now that's the alarm that went off and we're going to shut that off soon. We're going to, we're going to go retrieve it so that we don't blow the speaker down on this thing. We're going to log in to Tipsoft Online. <coughs> I'm going to put in my username and my password. I'm going to go to the upper left hand corner, Tips. We're going to see that it says there's one tip pending. You can see a flashing red light in the uh, corner. We're going to retrieve the tip. We're going to see W397-1004 is already on the server. Shows window peeping, peaks and windows and sell drugs. So I've now collected the tip. Talks about Scott Abrams, shows the gang that he's in. All right, so we've collected the tip. Shows the date and time that it is. And so we're going to kind of look at this tip right now and talk about uh, what can be done here. So I'm the cop or the crime stopper coordinator that gets this information, and I want to be able to determine some more information on this. So I go and I come down to the lower section and I say, um, what do you know about his drug supplier? Uh, how often and at what times does he window I'm going to send reply. It's going to show the date and the time that I sent this question to the tipster. So now we'll go back to the information that the tipster got when he or she sent the information in. And you'll notice that they were given the tip number W397 that's 1004, their password. And it says to go to www.tipsubmit.com if they have any additional information. So we're going to go to 
tipsubmit.com. Yes, sir. Uh huh. What tip do you have? It showed that. Yeah, yeah. That you. I think you clicked on the wrong one. If you look at, if you if you go, that's all right. If you click on the one just above it, then you'll see that the tip is there. And what you may have to do is, since you signed into it probably before I did. It may be that it's not going to show up. You may have to go out and re-sign in to get that tip. That's probably what happened. Okay, so, so it says for citizens. So I'm the tipster. Remember I sent this information in? It says submit a tip. I'm sorry, we already have submitted a tip. Go back. Back to tip submit again. All right. We're going to give additional information. Tipster login for follow. -up. So I'm going to click on that. Remember, our code number was W397 1004. Our password was upload. We're going to log in. Okay, we're going to see that. It says when we initially sent it in, and we're going to see that the agency asked, What do you know about his drug supplier? How often and at what times does he window feed? I'm going to come up here. Um, his drug supplier is Diane, who works for Wisconsin Crime Stoppers, and she is currently at the Great Wolf Lodge. Submit. Threads it, says it was sent successfully. Threads it, gives the date and time. So eventually we'll be notified that there's a tip waiting for us, that this tip is waiting for us. So this goes back and forth like that. Okay, so we go back to the uh, Champaign County. So here's basically our uh, our tip. We'll see if it's, we won't wait for them to notify us. We'll see if it's on the server yet. What happens if the tipster doesn't go back to the world and have seen your question? That is correct. The question is, what happens if the tipster does not go back to tip submit to give you information? And that happens sometimes. There are times that the tipster will never go back. They'll never even know that they that you asked them a question. But remember, if someone calls in to the phone and leaves a tip, are you ever able to call them back? You're not. So even though that is correct, that the tipster only knows what your question is if they go to tip submit to figure it out or to, to find out if there's additional information or if they want to give information, remember at least you have that because with a phone only, you don't you don't have it. Okay, so what happens is this goes back and forth between the tipster and the agency um, while, um, and, and so in the web tips, it's not in real time. You've got to, the tipster has to go to the website, has to, get the, has to give information or see what the questions are. So this kind of goes back and forth, and it's not necessarily something that happens very fast, but when it does happen, it's effective. I'm going to show you one of the best things about tip soft right away, and that's the bill ability to query information based on keywords. So for those of us who use paper systems, we know how hard it is when someone says, hey, you remember that drug case that happened on uh, Aaron Avenue? Oh, yeah, that was about four months ago. Who was that person? And you start hand digging through tips, and you start dragging through. Well, I know that in a case that happened in Champaign, that a tipster saw five kids around a vehicle and they were acting real suspicious in that they were pulling their sleeves over their hands before they were touching the vehicle. The tipster said, you know, 
I think there's a problem here. There must be something wrong with that car. So this tipster started taking digital pictures of the suspect, started sending in information to us. Now, it took a little bit of time, but Champaign police went, saw them near the car. There was a small chase. The car ended up being stolen. We were, ended up uh, solving six residential burglaries, recovered a shotgun, rifle, and electronic equipment from this tipster. So all I have to do is, I know this happened on Clayton Boulevard, so I'm going to query, put in Clayton. I'm trying to remember the uh, keyword that I can use to get to that. Um, okay, here it is. So you'll notice that with this tipster, it goes back and forth. You can see all the different information that they gave us, the rich information that occurred from the tips. Now the person that sent this in, they may never have called us if it was going to be a phone call. We certainly wouldn't have gotten a digital picture of the suspect. We certainly wouldn't have been able to go back and forth with them. So this is just one example of the power of this. Now it did take me a little bit of time because I forgot the keyword to query, but imagine all, all of us who use paper systems before, for those that use Tipsoft and the ones that still use it, you know what it would require for you to find this tip. Now, all of a sudden, you have the tip, you have the information, and you're able to uh, send it to the person that it needs to be sent to. Any questions so far? All right. So, Kevin's watching live. What's up, brother? How you doing? We'll uh, drink beer in Vegas here in a little bit. All right. So, <laughs> all right. So, now that we have the tip, let's go back to the tip that we sent in, the window peeping tip with uh, Scott Abrams. Okay, you'll notice that um, we already put the report number up there. That comes through. You'll notice there are other blanks. So if your agency has your own identification information that you want to put in, you can put it in. If you want the actual case number, you can put it in. The reason why they leave these extra uh, fields blank is so that you can track the tips the way you need to track them. Shows the date and time that it was created. And when we deliver it, it will show the date and time that it gets delivered. It shows the status. You can put different priorities on it. And you can change the offenses. So we'll go into a little bit later all the different offenses that you have, but let's uh, um, this also has to do with drugs. So let's look at all the offenses that I put in so far. I really would rather call this drugs or narcotics. So I'm going to click on narcotics. And I'm going to hit save. Got to hit edit and then save. You can put a street address if you want. You can put the city and state if you want. You can put if it's a community program or a campus issue. Let's say it's a school issue and you want to be able to track and query all the tips that come in on your schools. You can click on that section on the web on the on the tip soft database and you can track it that way. All right, so we've looked up here, we've talked about the power of query. We'll, we'll show another example of some, some cases that were solved with Tipsoft later. Um, down here in the lower left, you can see that all of your tips as they're coming in, come in in chronological order. You'll notice that there's a flag that's yellow. Well, that's yellow because we've responded to the tipster. When that tip first was retrieved from the server, there was a red flag there that lets you know that the tip has not been acted on yet. If you respond to the tip server, it would show up yellow. To get rid of it, all you have to do is click on that again, and it will go to a check mark. So I'm just going to click on the flag because we're done dealing with this topic. <clears throat> 
There's our uh, ticket information is drug suppliers Diane, who works for Wisconsin Crime Stoppers. She is currently at the Great Wolf Lot. Okay, so we're going to click on that. We're done with this tip. Um, let's say I change my mind after I click on it. I'm like, oh, I, I really do have something else to do. I'm going to click on it again and go right back to yellow. So it's very easy to go back and forth and, and keep track of where you're at with the tip. You can also put any of them that have been unsent. And like with our program, you're like, man, that's a lot that you haven't sent. But remember that we print off some of them and hand deliver so many through our agency because our agency that houses tips off is the one that, um, uh, that has the largest number of officers. It gets the largest number of tips. So we don't necessarily send those through. You can also see any new and updated ones that come through. So then you know, okay, those are the only two new ones that I have to worry about. If I want to, I can click edit. Let's say before I send it, I want to put some more information to the agency or to whatever officer I send it to. I can click edit. And it's just like you've got the ability to bold, underline, italicize, uh, center, different colors. So let's just say I want to say uh, Crime Stoppers Admin Note. He has a warrant for his arrest. So you want to make sure the agency or the officer that sends that knows what, what your information is. You can do that right then. Hit Save. All right. So we've really pretty much talked about this front screen, this first screen with tips off. Any questions so far? What, what if you, let's say, you get a tip and the guy doesn't go back on the, you know, refer back to his original number and he just sends a new tip on the exact same thing? Is there a way to merge them together? Yeah. There is. There's not a way to merge them together in the database, but remember, you have these two blank fields in the upper left-hand corner. Oh. You yourself can say, oh, well, this is connected. Okay. You yourself, and we'll talk about this later, you yourself can go to the notes section and can write yourself a note about that. Okay. So you you can't merge them together in the database, in the database, but you certainly can reference the tips um, in different places in the database. Because that could make a difference on your reward payout if, you know, if you got the same tipster but under different numbers. Correct. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. And, uh, yeah, he's saying that it could increase the reward if you can show that they're linked together and that the more information helped. That is absolutely correct. So, and you can reference them in the database that way. Any other questions so far? Okay, so now we'll go to the next tab, the Deliver To tab. And here you'll see that you can select any number of recipients that you have already put into the database. Remember, Kevin Anderson is a very smart guy. He knows computers backwards and forwards, but he knows that police officers were not so smart. He has dumbed down the program that even someone like I can use it very effectively. Uh, again, this isn't a guy who just sat behind his desk. He actually went, traveled the world, talked to people, drank beer with them, learned what made their program successful, and that is what is in this, in this software, in this database. All right, so uh, we go to the, the, the Deliver To tab, and we select a recipient. So of all the recipients in Champaign County, let's try that again. These are all the agencies or people that we sent to. Now, like I said, in Champaign, there's a number of people within our agency that we sent information to. So we've actually put those people in our database already just to make it a click and then we're done with it. So I should be in there somewhere. I'm going to put Deputy Chief Gallo. I can't find me real quick. Champaign. <coughs> Champaign County Coordinator, Troy Daniels. Okay, so we're going to select that person. That's me. All you have to do, let's say you want to email it. Hit email. That fast, it, it shows the predetermined email address that I put in the database. It gives the name of the tip. 
gives any information that I predetermined that I want to send to the agencies. If I want to, which I don't like doing, but if I really wanted to, it was an important enough tip, I could hit encrypt PDF and I could put a password that only the other person knows about. I don't, I don't normally do that, but I could do it if I wanted to. And it says include the disposition return. So I'm going to hit send, and now it's gone. It shows the date and time that it went to, which Tipsoft user sent it. And what will happen is when I go into my email address and I open that tip up, at the top of that tip, there's a blue link that says, if you basically click on this once you receive it, once the person clicks on that link, this database automatically resets and shows exactly the date and time that they open the tip. So it absolutely shows when the person got it. In addition, let's now, so we talked about email, now let's talk about how you can fax it. Those that are using paper systems, you're printing the stuff out, you're going to a fax machine, you're faxing it, and it's painful. Trust me, we did it for a long time. With this system, once again, you can put predetermined fax numbers in there, or you can just type the fax number in yourself. Um, because I have an email, my predetermined fax number is not in there, so I'm going to fax it to myself just to show you how simple it is. We're going to fax this tip. We're going to hit fax. Champion County Coordinator. Well, I, I lied. I am already in there. So that is our predetermined fax number, 217-403-6924. It tells the database to include a fax cover sheet and also include a disposition return sheet, which you can create your own very simply through the system. We'll talk about that in just a second. I hit send fax. Shows that the fax was sent. Once again, shows the date and time it was sent. Shows who the user was that sent it. Now what will happen is, when that fax goes to the agency, and the fax machine that's received, received it tells the database that, okay, I received it. Once again, the database will update and show the date and time that that fax was received, was received by the person that you faxed it to. So you will have a record that shows when it was faxed or when it was emailed. And if for some reason anything goes wrong, we're going to kind of skip back to another section just to let you know. We'll come back to the, to the Deliver To tab. But you go to Failed Tip Deliveries. It will show you a warning. If there's one there, there'll be a number there. You click on that, and it will show you the tip that did not go through, and it will tell you what went wrong. Whether it's an email, let's say you put in the put in the wrong email address. That's happened to me many times. It will say, eh, you messed up, something's wrong, and then you go back, look at what your mistake was, fix it, and send it again. What I'm telling you, for those that are not using Tipsoft, whatever amount of time you are using to manage your tips will be dramatically reduced if you go to Tipsoft. So, we'll go back to the Deliver To tab. All right, so there are numbers of crime stopper organizations all over the country and law enforcement agencies that are using TIPSOFT. And you can take a TIP and you can e-transfer that TIP to another agency. And when you do that, you can either send them just a copy of the TIP or you can e-transfer the entire TIP to them and give them the ability to have the two-way dialogue with your tipster. So what we'll do on this one, we'll go to the tab this time, we'll select a different recipient. I think Illinois Crime Stoppers is, is one of the Illinois State Crime Stoppers. We want, to, we want to send it to them. We select that. We click on it. We heat transfer it. This tip has already been sent. You want to send it again. Okay. I do want to send it again. All right. It says I've, e I've successfully e transferred a copy of the tip to them. Now it asks me if I want to give them ownership of the tip. Do I want to give them the ability to carry on the two-way communication? Only one agency can have the ball. Only one agency can have the two-way dialogue at one time. So it's asking me if I want to give ownership to Illinois State Crime Stoppers, and I'm going to say yes. I do. Click on OK. And now they have
These ones are very intimidating. All right. Okay, so we'll go back to, to the Deliver to tab. Let's see here what's happened so far. Okay, it says we uh, emailed it, faxed it, and we detransferred it. So we've done all of those so far. So that's basically the Deliver to tab. Go ahead. Quick question The difference between e transferred and email. E transferred, you, they still get the tip, the information, but now they take ownership. Exactly. With email, you're just sending it to them. They get a copy of it in their email system, and just like can, any, just any other, like any other email. You can do both. You yeah. can do both. You can send it to different people. You can send it, but once you transfer the ownership of the tip, you can actually still keep sending the tip out, but you will no longer have the ability to do the two-way dialogue. That's the only thing that ends once you transfer it and you transfer ownership. Any other questions? All right. So we talked about uh, uh, we talked about how we deliver the tips. Let's go to the disposition. You have to hit edit first, but on after you hit edit, you can change anything on here. So if we hit edit, we can change the status of the case, whether it's been cleared by arrest, whether it's information only, already known, whatever. Um, we can put in values for recovered property, how many vehicles, weapons. Um, any arson loss, fraud value. The reason why you put all this stuff in is because the reports that are generated through Tipsoft are uh, out of this world. And so once you start keeping track of this stuff in your um, in your database, you can actually go through and generate generate reports that that show. So your ability to create your monthly report simple. Go in, takes a couple minutes. You can click it off. You can see how many arrests you had, what the values were of the recovered property, any weapons you've recovered, and that sort of thing. All right. Um, in addition, you can talk about your reward. You can talk about the reward that your board authorized, um, when it was picked up, what the check number was, if you guys issued checks or cash. Um, and you can also do the reward calculation. Now, I don't use this part of the database, but you can. You can set up this database to calculate the rewards that you want to recommend your board also. You can put any kind of information in the disposition narrative that you want to, to keep track of. You can also put uh, what the people were arrested for, how many arrests, how many cases cleared, charges laid. Um, the AD stands for administrative discipline in case you want to keep track of school tips and which tips led to um, school violations. And so that's what the AD stands for. Any question on this tab? All right. Notes. You can put any notes in there that you want. Let's say that you got a number of people that are looking at the same database. You can make sure you are communicating with each other through this field. Anytime you put a note in, it will say who put the note in. So on this one, we'll put um, Maybe I do have to hit edit first. Okay. You have to hit edit first. Uh, I spoke <coughs> with Scott today. Add private notes. Shows the date and time, who it was that entered the notes. Attachments. Let's say that I've got a picture of Scott Abrams in my intelligence database. I want to put it. I just click upload. I find where it is on my computer and I upload it. Go to the miscellaneous tab. You can see if the tipster says how they found out about your organization, you can keep track of that. Um, you can keep track of whether it was a crime of the week. You can keep track of if the original tip sheet was retrieved from the agency. Some people are interested in that. All right. So now let's go back to the main database. Any questions so far? Go ahead. No? Okay. All right. All right. So let's talk about, we've talked about web tips. We've kind of gone through the system on how to deliver a web tip. But also Tipsoft allows you to communicate through text messaging. Again, 
Text messaging is huge with younger people. Absolutely, this is how they communicate. They hardly even call each other. They're texting each other. Thousands and thousands. Like my, my daughter's 14. For those that have young people, especially young um, girls in middle school, we know that they text all the time. In fact, I don't know, like, they'll probably have some kind of surgery that 20 years from now that they have to have done to their thumbs that no other generation's had to do. So we'll look, and this is how this works with tips on with Tipsoft, they use the aggregate number of crimes, which is 274637. 274637 is the number that people text to, to to route the text tips where they need to go. The keyword is associated with each program or, or law enforcement agency. So, and you can set as many keywords as you want as long as it hasn't been taken by another agency. So, Champaign County's keyword is CC tip. So, I just tell citizens who want to give a text message, um, text your information to 274637 with the keyword CC tip, and you'll get your information to Crime Stoppers anonymously. I set a tip up already. On my cell phone. And this tip says CC tip. Scott Mills has fled from Canada and is hiding in the relative safety of Wisconsin Dells drinking beer. <laughs> <laughs> test. And the reason why I put test is because I've done these presentations before and I did one in mm -hmm. Illinois and I said that this particular crime stopper coordinator who's like the president of his organization had just robbed a bank and I forgot to put test and by the time I got back to my agency the tip had already gone to the yeah it really wasn't my best day but he didn't get taken down at gunpoint at least that's so that's a good thing so I'm gonna hit send 274637 CC doggone it I'm so blind Yes, everyone does. You know what I did? I uh, only put CCTP because I'm blind, so you're going to have to forgive me. So we're going to have to do that again. It just said there was an error. So CC tip. We'll do this one uh, a little bit shorter. He's already had two more beers. What's that? He's already had two more beers. Yeah, no doubt. Move on. Scott robbed the bank. <coughs> Test. Scott Abrams. Mills. Well, I forgot the Mills part. Okay. CC tips, Scott robbed the bank. We just sent it. So what's happening now is um, it's encrypted, the information. Okay. We just got information back that says your alias is P9V3. Call 911 if urgent. Text help for info. If replies put you at risk, text stop. Et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. That information is encrypted. It goes to Canada. The reason why we sent it to Canada is because their Supreme Court has basically ruled that Crime Stopper information is extraordinarily difficult to get to. They're going to make it very difficult. Plus, we put it in a whole different. We're going to retrieve that one quickly. Okay. Now we're going to go to the <laughs> someone's someone's messing with me. <laughs> they're doing. Someone out there is someone out there is uh, sending in text tips also. All right, enough of that. <laughs> All right, you got me on that one. All right. So the the information went to Canada encrypted. The phone number was separated from the tip information, and they put an alias on it. That information went down to a server in Texas. That alias was stripped off, and they put another alias on it and sent it to the law enforcement agency. And now we will be able to go back and forth in real time. So, CC tips, Scott robbed the bank. 
Which bank did he rob? It's in reply. Once again, it threads it, gives a date and time, which bank did he rob? And this goes back and forth and back and forth. Um, remember, this is the phone that on the tips are also, which bank did he rob? He robbed the first national bank of Ozark. Okay. Senate. And so this just goes back and forth, back and forth. Again, go ahead. Again. You can say, well, you know, people aren't going to use text tips quite as often. And that could be true. So far, you're going to get most of your tips through tips off currently as we speak through web tips. For text tips, there may be times where you may not get as many. Maybe 10, 20 percent of your tips come in will come through the text. Maybe 5 percent. But if you are the victim of a crime and the person who has the information feels most comfortably sending in information through text, wouldn't you, wouldn't you want them to send it in that way? We had a case in Champaign where two masked men went into a drug dealer's house in the middle of the night to rob them. Pretty typical throughout the country. Um, this particular drug dealer didn't believe that the gun that he had was real. They're masked, remember? So he attacks the, the gunman and the gunman now turns the gun to the 11-year-old boy and 9-year-old girl who are awake and tells the drug dealer, if you don't let me go, I'm killing your kids. Drug dealer immediately let go of him. The uh, bad guy spun around, repeatedly shot him, and executed him in front of his children. Once he started to shoot him, the drug dealer dove forward and grabbed on to the bad guy and bled all over his shirt. Both masked men flee the scene. They go out to a car where there are two more people waiting. They flee the scene. A couple blocks away, they take off. Uh, the bad guy takes off his bloody white T-shirt, tosses it out of the window. It's freezing cold, 33, 34 degrees out, driving rain. Champaign police officer who's well trained by the command staff there sees his white T-shirt sitting in the middle of a road, two or three blocks away, in the driving rain, and says, "That eh, maybe it's related." Comes, covers it up, protects it. We 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 send it off to the lab. Blood on the T-shirt comes back to the victim. Sweat. From the bad guy on the tag, comes back to a guy named Tyrone. Of course, we don't know that at the time. All we know is that there's a bloody t-shirt, and we have no idea who did this. So we're getting ready to spend thousands and thousands of dollars in overtime trying to run down every group of guys that are committing home invasions in Champaign. And there were a few at the time. Until one Sunday afternoon, I got a text tip. And we're going to query once again, because we don't know. I don't know which tip it is. So we're going to query Tyrone, because Tyrone is the suspect. And we're going to see homicide. Okay. Here is all the information that the tips are provided me on Tyrone that Sunday afternoon after this Back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. We take this information and we get, we go to Tyrone, we get a sample from his mouth of DNA, and we compare it to the sweat on the tag, and we get enough to make an arrest. Um, again, this is a particular case where, who knows, maybe the person would have called in, maybe not. thing to remember also is that an hour after this, we had another home invasion homicide that happened in Rantoul, which is an agency in Champaign County. I was getting text information on that information on that also. The only reason that the text in that particular case didn't solve the crime is because the bad guy stripped his jacket off and left his ID in the jacket. Otherwise, they would have had nothing, and the text tip would have solved two homicides within one hour in Champaign County. The point is, is we don't get as many text tips, and there may be some people say, ah, we have a phone, ah, let's just do it that way. And that's true. <laughs> that's what you want to do, but you are absolutely not getting as much information as you could, you're not running it as efficiently as you could, and you're, you're basically spending a lot of money with paper that you could use the database for. Any question on text tips so far? 
Okay, in addition, for Droid and iPhone, tip submit mobile. Tip submit mobile is a way for you to go. If you go to tip submit, you can go and you can download an application and people do all over the country and they send in information that ties directly into the database and you will see that you can also promote that in your agency people download that and they will actually send in tips through tips tip submit mobile through a smartphone application so any questions so far on tipsoft or how this information takes information from web text or smartphone one other thing, if you guys are answering your own phones or you're having a difficult time or there, are, or there are periods of time your phone's not being answered, we also, crime scene information is outside. Our agency uses them. They are dirt cheap. You will not answer your phones 24 hours a day, seven days a week as professionally or as well or as consistently. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's cheap, way cheap. They use tips off. So then what happens is during the evening or the weekends when you're gone, you come in and all of a sudden all your tips are already in your database you don't even have to type them in in addition if you take your own tips for some reason you want to enter them in you can enter your own tip manually through tips off any questions now you got a uh, probably a brilliant discussion from Scott Mills on social media earlier today they also have tips off alerts that you get when now that you get so it helps you create alerts send them to uh, Facebook also e email them out and also text them out to the people who subscribed to your program so Tipsoft also comes with that any questions at all okay what you'll do if you go in and I we haven't even gone into all this but Tipsoft does an excellent job of creating training. So if you go to tra the training videos down here, you can look at any number of very professionally done, easy to understand, even easy enough for cops to understand. So um, you can see where it talks about all the different things that you can see with Tipsoft. You asked um, what are, if you go to the Tipsoft manual, You will see getting started, online training, implementation checklist, best practices for law enforcement agencies, schools, press releases that you can use, um, introduction to tips off, how to take a tip, etc. Yeah, I'm absolutely. Said to jump in at any time. Was your who asked the question there? She did. I bet. Which person asked the question? Were you asking how to get, how to advertise that this works out there? Okay. I, I, Troy said if anything pops up and I wanted to jump in, I want to jump in. Um, Kevin's watching on the other end, and uh, I can tell you that what I've done with social media uh, as a police officer and as a Crime Stoppers representative, to how to get this out, is actually uh, I'm going to go through Twitter, and then I'm going to go through Facebook, and I'm going to go through YouTube, and I'm going to go through Google Plus, so that it's really clear what because uh, they all work differently. Let's say there's a um, let's say there's a school shooting, and you respond as the emergency responder, uh, and and the corporate communications whoever the spokesperson is for your agency, the number one tool to actually get the word out about what's going on is start a hashtag on Twitter. So if there's a school shooting, let's say that there's a shooting that happens in this place where we're at right now, which is Great Wolf Lodge, in Wisconsin, you don't want to go out and start a hashtag on Twitter. Uh, saying shooting Great Wolf Lodge because you wrecked their reputation. So follow number sign shooting GW for updates and you're the official person. So you start a hashtag. Hashtag on Twitter means that you can click on the hashtag, anybody that's following Twitter, and see what everybody's saying. So how the tips off gets into it is your Crime Stoppers person, when <coughs> something's going down, you want to get out to those people that are involved with that. Who's the shooter? What are they wearing? What's their last seen direction and all that type of stuff? And here's how you anonymously get a tip into this system. So what you do is you start tweeting from your Crime Stoppers into 
uh, Great Wolf Lodge. Um, uh, what did we call it? Shooting Great Wolf. Shooting GW. So you would go on your Twitter and you would go anonymously, text uh, whatever your agency code is, plus your tip to 274637 if you know who the shooter is and where he is. And then you would put number sign and you would put what? What's the hashtag we started? We started it. Everybody that's following that, including the major media, is now seeing, you'll see that they start rebroadcasting on the major news to text such and such to 274637 for anonymous tips to Crime Stoppers. And you're doing it all from your desk or your smartphone, wherever you happen to be at the time when that goes down. That's Twitter. Facebook, what do you do on Facebook? If you're putting a picture out of celebrating somebody good, doing something successful in your community, because Facebook's where most of the community are on right now. And say you go out for this event, and I take a picture of all you guys right here, and I put it out, I'll say Crime Stoppers Delegates at Conference learn about Tipsoft in the text portion of that picture that you posted on there. Here are the ways that you can anonymously leave a Crime Stoppers tip into the Tipsoft program in your area. So you educate. Call the police directly if you have information, if you need to remain anonymous. Here's how it works on calling the number. Here's how it works on online. And here's how it works on uh, um, text tips. And here's how it works on an Android phone app. And here's how it works on an iPhone app. So have all those links ready and just have a quick and dirty thing to put it in and keep putting success out and virally marketing how you do this. You don't want to start this in a crisis. You want to start this every single day, celebrating what you do, and, and keep getting it out so that you ingrain how to, how this tip stop works with people. But you do it with the Crime Stoppers brand. YouTube. If I stand here and take a YouTube video up today, so we live streamed my presentation and it went right to YouTube, which is something new. Okay, we're live streaming right now on UStream, which is something not so new but very effective. So on uh, uh, YouTube. If you go out and take a little quick YouTube with your with your quick and dirty camera and you put it up saying, here's what we did today. We celebrated success and safety at Wisconsin Crime Stoppers Conference. Here's Troy. <coughs> this is what he did. In the text of that video, the title of the video is really key. So you would say, here is how Crime Stoppers tips work. Make it really simple. And then in the text of the video, it'll, same thing. Here's how we actually can get an anonymous tip to Crime Stoppers to help prevent and solve crime in our community phone number, the website, the text tips, the Android phone app, the iPhone app. Have all those links right there, boom, gone, and then you tag the video. Google Plus, like I said, Google Plus, I think it's got a lot of solutions for this whole divide between personal and professional. On Google Plus, you just do the same thing. You take all your content that you're throwing it out and you just throw it into Google Plus and you virally mark it. In an emergency, call 911. You have to make that distinction. If you want to be a witness, call your police. An anonymous tip can save a life for Crime Stoppers. Here's how you do it. And you just keep putting that into your stream on Google Plus if you're up and going. So the number one thing I would say in answer to your question is identify what social media platforms work in your area. <laughs> and, and then and then do, do, do that as a... That makes sense. The other thing to do is make sure that you understand how important the website is. Not just your website, not just the Crime Stopper website, but every police agency in your county's website needs to have a link to the Crime Stopper website and also maybe even the uh, the um, uh, the section where you can click to send a web tip to. You can put those. You can put that right on every website. All the media websites in your county can have those links also. And also in every press release that you put out, at the bottom of every press release, you make sure that they understand where to go to leave information for Crime Stoppers, even if it's just the Crime Stopper website. Scott, do you have something else to say? Okay, we are out of time. Um, here's some more information up at the table. Feel free to grab it if you want. The only thing I'll leave you with is this may cost a little bit of money, but remember, if you went to a bank or some organization and said, we need to raise this money, we're going to do a big press release on who gave it to us, the amount of money that it costs and what you get from it, there's no comparison. This is worth the time and money. And Troy will be here for the remainder of the conference. Uh, he'll be here tomorrow morning yeah. as well. So if you need other questions, Troy will be here. can answer those questions as we go through that. 
I just want to take our appreciation, Troy, as well. Thank you for being here and presenting to the Cheeseheads uh, from Illinois. So thank you very much. Hi, Kevin. Hi, Kevin. How you doing? <laughs> um, I'm just going to grab the projector out of here, and then Judge Carter and, and Dave Perlman will be up next. Um, just a real quick turnaround. You guys can actually start talking while I, if I can disassemble this. And okay, we, we just started, didn't we, guys? Yeah, I'm going to finish this off uh, out here, you guys. Um, this is the good thing about social media. I've got one extra thing to say here. Um, on your websites, it's really imperative. Everybody has the link to leave a tip on your website. Your website should be your number one place that you drive traffic to. For the oversight groups like Crime Stoppers USA, Crime Stoppers International, they're very, very leery about um, not being an actual active tip taker. The value of Tipsoft is that if you go to CrimestoppersUSA.com website, it'll say click here to leave a tip. It's not, it's just an umbrella organization. It's not the actual um, action group that's doing it. It's the local programs. But the good thing about Tipsoft is there's a drop down box for the city, the state, um, the province, uh, anywhere in the world and all of these programs in the background are networked which is absolutely phenomenal so if somebody gets a tip in to say New York City but it's actually for Los Angeles the back-end people who you are seeing in this room will actually communicate with each other and get that tip down there so it's it's very very useful because it's integrated and uh, it's it, it crosses borders so that is very valuable and thank you for watching we will archive this and uh, uh, get it out there for everybody. And thanks for watching there, uh, Kevin. Uh, looks like you're the only viewer right now, but uh, that's great. We will uh, archive it and tweet it out, and others will watch. <laughs> and thanks to Scott Abrams for always getting us where we need to go. Hi, Kevin. How you doing, bud? <laughs> That is Crime Stoppers at work right there, switching rooms for the next presentation, keeping us all on time. Thank you very much for watching.